So what we have here is a $20 box of goodies that I got at a thrift store. And uh, yeah, it's a TRS-80 Color Computer 2, which uh, creates obviously vivid color graphics and uh, instant loading ROM packs and TV sets and all that crap. It's a computer that hooks up to your TV and it does things. It has a whopping 16K of, uh, K of memory as standard basic. As far as I'm aware, there's about like three different kinds of basics, like disk basic and uh, extended. This is just standard, so this is simple. We have more of the same on the back. And some writing and a sticker telling us to which Radio Shack this was shipped to in 1983 when someone bought this. At least that's what I remember seeing. So in here we have a computer and a box that didn't open. I'll put this over here for now. We'll look at that in a minute. Other stuff we got here are joysticks that uh, do not center at all. I just grabbed this one instead. This one's already unraveled. Whoa. No centering, but they are analog, so that's kind of nice for the time. I don't think any of the other computers that these microcomputers that you hook up to your TV had analog inputs like that, unless you're talking about like paddles or something. I have one cartridge for one game called Popcorn. We'll look at that later. And a book full of programs for you to not type out because it's a pain in the butt and the results are less than satisfying. Also in this box, for whatever reason, I got a Sony Remote Commander, which is, I think it's a, a remote for either a beta tape player or a VCR to fast forward, rewind, or freeze, pause. And it's hooked up with a giant cable that you would string across your living room, or at least I'm assuming so. I'm thinking that's what that is. At one point there was some weird microphone in here. Oh, heck, there it is. I don't know what this is. I don't know what it's for. It's kind of strange. We have, wow, a free six months subscription to the TRS-80 Microcomputer News. Apparently this was sent in 1984. I didn't know I had this paper in here, so somebody redeemed their free six months. I also got a computer cassette, which has I have no idea on it. It could have something on it. Might not. I don't have a tape player, so that is a mysterious mystery to be solved another day. All right. Besides all the stuff that I probably shouldn't show on camera, showing where I live, even though you could probably find that really easily if you really wanted to. We have a fold-out pamphlet about uh, setup and some commands video control codes, all this good stuff. I guess it's like a quick reference, special characters and error messages. We have the big book. Getting started with Color Basic. This is the one that had all the character on it. Oh, that's kind of paper backing. Well, you got all sorts of cool drawings and instructions on how to program Basic. All the stuff that I don't know how to do, I probably will never know how to do. Radio Shack magazines. That's kind of cool. It has the MC-10 on there. My dad has an MC-10, and it, it's kind of a sucky computer, but kind of interesting. I think it has the same video processor as the TRS-80 color computer, but it just has a slower processor and less RAM. Way less RAM. It had a 4K making it basically useless. So here we have a catalog with all the like the business computers, the business TRS-80 and all this good stuff. Let's see how much a floppy disk costs. We got a single disk for five dollars. That's a five and a quarter inch disk. That's a eight inch package of three, 20 bucks for a single sided. That's kind of expensive. So after all that obligatory documentation crap, we have the computer itself, which is a uh, just a keyboard that you hook up to your TV. I think they called this the melted keyboard because it's 
rather short. It doesn't have very, very deep travel distance. It's not very fun to type on. It's kind of mushy, but it gets the job done. And it's better than the MC10, which had the little chiclet plastic -y keys. It's not better, not better than the Commodore 64 keyboard, obviously. That thing was a lot better than this thing. The back, we have a big old power switch. It's kind of fun to push. We have joysticks left and right. We have serial I.O. for, I think, your disk drives and stuff. We have cassette, the cassette port. We have an RF out. Channel two, 3 and 4, and then a reset button for resetting it. It's kind of a decently weighted computer. Looks kind of yellow on the camera there, but I didn't even notice that until I just barely turned this on. So yeah, this is a TRS-80 color computer too. I guess we'll... Well, here's the cartridge slot. Plug it in and see what it does. Alright, with a simple two little wires, we're ready to go. Let's flip the power switch. We have Color Basic 1.2 Tandy 1982. And, wow, this is a computer. Whoa. Amazing. We can type things. We can program things. I guess I could, I could attempt to program a loop real quick. So I guess I made something that might uh, be a little bit more visually stimulating than your typical high loop. So I made three different highs with three different spaces. If we run that, we get a huge mess of you can't tell what's going on. So that's how fast this computer is. It's very fast. It can write high a million times per second. So let's pop this cartridge in here and see what kind of video game popcorn is. Instant loading. Not quite instant loading, but close enough. Compared to loading it off the tape, it definitely is pretty instant. And this little wire is bent. All right, so popcorn. It's kind of a, uh, what, what's the game? It's a Kaboom clone, basically. With our analog joystick, we can capture the popcorns falling down from the top of the screen. I don't know what they're doing up there, or why they're falling, or what we're catching it in, but we are doing just that. It's not the most impressive thing in the world. So apparently out of all the uh, microcomputers you could buy for hooking up to your TV for home use, this is one of the faster ones with a, a quite speedy processor. It's just that it doesn't have any uh, real dedicated hardware for graphics and all this other stuff that can cheat it into making it look like it can do more than it can. Or what, No, I guess that's inaccurate because it can do it, but not by the CPU. Everything basically on the screen. The audio is basically brute forced by the CPU. There is no fancy chips to make all this happen besides just a basic video generator inside of there, which is kind of interesting. It's a bit different. So since I've gotten this thing, I've kind of tested around to see what kind of uh, devices I would have that would make this thing uh, work or load some programs. And the best one that I've found is my old Asus laptop. One thing I've found out while searching stuff up about this computer while trying to make it work is you can have this uh, you have this command called audio on and that actually lets you play the cassette through the TV speaker so you could play some rush through it I guess even have it on the TV here that's down but this is also up So we have a TRS-80 playing Rush, so that's pretty badass. But besides that, I took that book that contained all the programs and wrote one out, and it took a whopping 45 minutes, and the results, like I said, were less than satisfying. Here we have an Audacity recording of the saved program. I don't know if I typed it in right or not, so let's uh, give it a C load for cassette load and play this.
beautiful. So the thing actually has a relay inside there for turning the audio on and off, so that's kind of cool. But uh, anyway, so yeah, that was the horrible noise was the program. And we can just shut the laptop now. And for all that loading, let's list the program here. It is that long. I had to type all this crap out, and the result is... Kind of crappy. All right. So I guess you're supposed to get to the, the PL symbol down to the bottom and avoid the dot looking dudes. But for whatever reason, you can't go down on every turn. I don't know if I typed that in incorrectly or not. There we go. Or you hit up and down at the same time, then it'll make me go. I don't know why the score is counting backwards. But this is incredibly irritating, so we're gonna stop it right there before I go mad. So I think the only reason my ASUS is the only device I have that will actually load programs onto this is because it's the loudest coming out of the headphone jack. So I think this thing requires a rather loud signal for anything to work right. And the only thing I can get to work on this is that program that I just showed you. And it's the one that I saved from that saved from this computer itself. So if we uh oh I hate looking for letters while I'm typing, so I'm gonna turn the audio back on. And these are all programs that I found off the Color Computer Archive. Thank you for dating my video anyway. Um if you notice, if you compare it from the last program I ran, it sounds a bit different. It's a little bit higher pitched, so I don't know if that's the reason that it's doing it, but let's see, uh, you gotta do, see load M for machine code, and we, now we can load it. And it always gives I.O. errors, which is unfortunate, at least for that program. M-bug or mega-bug or whatever. The game I kind of wanted to try out. It's kind of like uh, Pac-Man with a magnifying glass. It's kind of cool. And it also talks. So that's one of, one of the games I wanted to really try out. But I got a whole bunch of other games that don't seem to work so well. I think this one might work, but if I remember, it does not actually run the program after it's done loading. So as you can see, the computer is still attempting to load, but the audio file has long since uh, stopped, so it kind of just hung there. We can hit the reset button and try to run it, I guess. You get that. So I guess it halfway loaded, and then it kind of died. So I don't know if it's just because I have something wrong with my computer, or the TRS-80 Color Computer 2, or if I'm running the wrong kind of programs, or if I have the wrong kind of basic, since this has the standard basic and not the extended or disk basic. basic. So I'm not entirely sure why that isn't working, but until I figure that out, this is a Color Computer 2. That's kind of cool.